terms of influence and stuff like that, I love Sean Lane's playing. Unbelievable, unbelievable player. Unbelievable mind. That wasn't just a guy who practiced a lot of in France. He had this huge brain and this big warm heart and this special music came out of him. He will be missed. You know, but the, the thing that really got me about him was, okay, you can play ridiculously fast, but still play interesting notes. Um, like you slow some of that stuff down. Some of it sounds like a Charlie Parker lick. Some of it sounds like a printer going mental. Some of it sounds like Hendrix. There's all these different flavors of playing fast. It's not just... You know, we don't ever need to hear that lick again, right? With Sean, it was still just music. It was like it transcended the guitar. Um, there will never be another Sean. But um, if there's one thing we can all learn from him, it is... If you must play fast, play good stuff fast. You know? Okay. Uh, I'm very fortunate to have gotten to know Sean pretty well. And we, Sean, do you all know Sean Lane? Yes. yes. Okay, I hope so. I hope so because I, I, I ask that sometimes to some guitar players. I don't know Sean. Well, he's easily the most brilliant person I've ever met. As far as if I've ever met a genius, it's Sean Lane. There's no doubt about it. He. It's just his, his level of intellect and, and knowledge of so many subjects. But obviously, musical musical depth was incredible. He knew as much about classical as he did about pop and rock. And uh, and he could play as well on guitar as he could on every other instrument. Put him on the drums and the keyboards. And it was insane. So we first met um, at something called the Axe Attack, which was a big Ibanez uh, concert promotion in uh, at the NAMM show in 1993. And it was uh, Joe Satriani and Steve Vai and Paul Gilbert and Sean, Miss Lane and Alex Golnick and Red Beach and me. <laughs> oh, anyway, uh, it was a great night. And uh, but then we did a clinic tour because he was an Ibanez guy, just kind of briefly. But we did a clinic tour back uh, also in 1993, I think later that year. And it was just one of the most memorable weeks of my life. We had so much fun. We laughed so much. The Ibanez trip that we were traveling with was kind of a crazy guy to start with, so he was cracked up. And there was many nights where Sean and I would end up in the hotel bar. He, there was a piano and acoustic guitar. We sit around and play Beatles songs. He knew, I mean, so much depth. It was so great. And of course, his playing was incredible. He brought his two homes, solid state heads, and he had his Westbury uh, distortion pedal, and I think two or three boss delays. You know, it was it was incredible. I mean, the playing was great. He was very kind to me. He liked my playing too, and so we jam a little bit every day. And uh, and it was and he was the first guy to go. Oh, that Charlie Parker that you playing? It's like, how did you hear that? You know, he was the one guy to know exactly what it was. And it's, of course. So and then so we we stayed in contact. He lived in Memphis, and my my brother lived in Memphis for many years because he was teaching at my brother's a philosophy teacher. He was teaching at the university there. So I go to visit my brother and call Shane, Sean. Him, hey, yeah, come on over. So I go to his house. He played me this music that was uh, he was working on. Way, way amazing. So really blessed to have gotten to know him. Sad that he's no longer with us, but uh, man, he left us a lot of incredible playing to try to catch up to, because he's way far ahead of most of us, man. He's just phew, brilliant. But thank you for the question. And, uh, please check out Sean Lane's music if you haven't already. Right. There's another guitar player, Sean Lane. He passed away, but hes it's beyond guitar. From outer space, I don't know. He's probably the most incredible musician I've ever seen or heard. And it's beyond what I even can understand, but I got to hang around him a few times and he was like, he took so much information and I've never seen anything like that. Like where he could just read many books in a day and he had just like a memory where he could remember everything. And wow. he is an insane inspiration. I It's sad he's gone, but he's not gone. Sean Lane, the most terrifying guy of all time. Um, actually, the, the, the ideas I get from Sean Lane were a bunch of pentatonic things, um, where instead of playing it like standard, you know, kind of tune per string, I, I started working on stuff where I'd go uh, like three notes on a string. For that's like descending fours, you know, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. So descending sixes three notes per string it should be like. <laughs> which is a real, uh, real finger torture. Um, a lot of the Sean Lane stuff, though, is, you know, real. It, it's, it almost sounds two-handed, but he's doing it all with his left hand. I mean, 
some of the souls I've heard sound sort of like this. Uh, and it's completely crazy stuff, but he's somehow doing it with one hand. Um, and then the guy's, I mean, besides doing terrifying stuff, the guy's got the most amazing phrasing. He's got blazing, amazing phrasing. Um, and uh, every once in a while, uh, like when I'm up at Mike Varney's house, he's got some videotapes of him that are just completely amazing. He's doing like all these uh, old Hendrix songs and stuff, doing them just perfect. I mean, the electric fence could not com even come close to what Sean is doing. Although, but, but we dress up, so we got the advantage.